All right. We got the lab radar out. Finally got her tuned. Ready to roll out. And we're going to see if we can get y'all in and focus. We were shooting this here. A Gila. You just got a minor adjustment. 150 grain. Yep, yep, yep. Now we're going to move on up the scale. We're going to move up the scale. Digging through the ammo crate here. Ah. Now we got some of this good stuff here. All right. That's good ammo. Yeah, I got this from y'all the last time I was here. I think it was probably like the last box. So we're going to take it out through its paces and see what we're working with. See if it's a keeper or a giveaway. Yeah. It, it shoots pretty good in mine. Oh, what you shoot, brother? I built myself a, uh, AR-10. Oh, an AR-10. Yeah. But, uh, uh, Looks like it's some good stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm pretty much stack them in there. I might sling one out to a 10 every now and then. Mm-hmm. I understand yeah. that, brother. Yeah. And, uh, as much as we do this when nobody's here, Oh, you should be a damn marksman. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> There's no excuses. Yeah. yeah, especially when you got all this free time out here too. Yeah, dude. You know, we can we can shoot two hours before anybody gets in. Isn't that a blessing? Nice. Jealous. Yeah. All right. We'll pull 155 grain scenars. Woo, look at that, dead end, 2898. No adjustment? No, check it out. Dead on. Wow. I guess just the extra five grains right. shouldn't make it. But look at that muzzle velocity, almost 2,900 feet a second. Can't beat that for a 30 inch barrel. Hell, I should be hitting a mile with this ammo. The answer should be hitting a mile. Well, I'm still trying to be like you, Sniper Dre. <laughs> and for y'all who don't know, can't tell that voice behind the camera is Sniper Dre. We're going to go look at his target soon. I got a hole in my hair drum and I hurt my back last night. 2934. Woo, this stuff's smoking. Wow. This stuff is smoking. I have to save this stuff. Oh, I didn't even temp it. Dang. Let me see your temper. That's one thing we forgot to do. We forgot to temp. I think all we have to do is just temp one, and they all probably about the same. Right, right. It's not the big of a hole. But I'm supposed to have something in it right now. 80? Call it 84. 84, I'll work with that. 84. 84, copy that. And I guess I'll go ahead and just run 10 through the chrono, just so I have a good number. Yeah, this stuff pretty good for sixty-three dollars for fifty rounds. That's a good damn price. Nice. I want to have one in there. So with your Kestrel, it compensates for ammo temperature. Mm-hmm. So, so when you put it in in the Kestrel, it asks you for the temperature, and when and and, and I guess it takes into account for different uh, temperature of the day. Depends on you know how good the powder is going to burn. Remember, you know the hotter the temperature, the hotter it the better it burns. For sure. So, you know, that's what I was saying when we had went out with uh, at the arena the first time with Corbin and Scott, they had that 416 bear ammo, it's damn near co clo close to frozen because if you have it too hot, you know, you might have a catastrophic failure. Right, right. You know, just hanging with the gurus, 
That's how you become one. Yeah, I wonder why they have it loaded so hot. Well, you know, there's nothing wrong with having some a little hot, but then when the guy I was talking to about re reloading, he was saying some uh, powders aren't temp stable. Right. So that's why everybody runs with the Varget because it's a good temp stable powder. And you don't have to worry about it being hot or cold. It's going to be co co consistent. Twenty nine thirty, and I qualified again. Oh, you bitch! Ah. Yeah, if it's a little puller, I want it. If it's a little puller brass, I'm keeping it. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, now I'm pulling, pulling to the left now. Pulling to the left. Gotta start pulling to the right. Twenty nine twenty. Can't wait to see this average. Twenty nine oh three. Twenty nine, twenty one. Let's see if I bring it over. Tad more to the right. Will that help me out a little bit? I know I can't be pulling all of them to the left. Pulling to the left today. Hanging on to the left today. Oh, that was a good one. This is my last two. And I start inputting. I left the Kestrel in the car, but that's okay. to love. I mean, the wind is it's doing a little blowing now. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. It is blowing. Yeah, I need to come to the right a little bit. Sweet. I'm gonna run and go grab the Kestrel. And we're gonna plug some numbers in. But I definitely gotta check this uh 
this average out. And I was hoping they had some more of this ammo. They didn't have, they didn't have no 6.5, and all they had was some American Eagle uh, 308, one, uh, I think 149 grain. That stuff that they say is designed for uh, M1As that'll shoot good in, in M1As. Okay. Yeah. Right. But now, does it shoot well in M1As? I couldn't tell you. Stand by. <laughs> 